my god, the whole bit moved. <laughs> Hello and welcome back to my channel. My name is Kika and today I have another uh, video that I'm super excited about starting to film. Um, and this video, well, essentially I'm gonna debunk the myth or bust the myth or I don't know, maybe it's not a myth actually, but I'm going to get really clear on how much time it actually takes to knit a sweater. Because I always roughly estimate that knitting a sweater, because that is something that everybody always asks me like, oh, how long does it take you to knit your sweater from start to finish? And usually, I mean, of course, depending on how much you knit, but I would say an estimate, if I'm not like hardcore knitting, um, anywhere from, you know, two to four weeks, I would say on average. Um, but I'm really interested in seeing like how many actual hours does it take? And I'm kind of interested um, because I've been knitting so much lately. I think I'm kind of optimistic. So on average, I often roughly estimate that it takes around 40 to 50 hours. Um, and then if you need a couple of hours, you know, maybe four to five times a week, um, I think that would add up to kind of four, like three or four weeks that you could knit a sweater. But in this video, we are going to find out how long it actually takes. So my plan is, and this was a little bit inspired by the 24 hour knitting challenge I did uh, at the end of the year, no, at the beginning of this year. Um, so I'm going to take you along again as I knit a sweater from start to finish. This is also me designing a sweater from start to finish because as I've mentioned before, I am currently working on a knitting book. These are very <laughs> floppy. A knitting book that is going to be released later this year. So at the moment I'm working on knitting all the samples, doing all the patterns, and there's a lot that goes on to, into it. But I kind of want to show you a little bit behind the scenes of what I'm doing right now. So the idea is that I'm going to do a color worked sweater. So a fair isle sweater where you work with multiple yarns. So you have lots of color. And this is really where, like this was one of my passions back in the day. I did a lot of color work and I have uh, the weirdest color combinations. But then for many years now, I haven't really done that much color work. And this is actually the sweater I'm wearing right now uh, is the latest that I just finished a few days ago. Uh, I'm super excited and, or super excited, super satisfied with how it turned out. Um, but now I really want more colors, more color patterns. So that is what I'm going to be doing. And I have done, I've done this sample um, yesterday and I've been trying to figure out the pattern for the longest time. And I just came to the conclusion, I need to see it on the needles, I need to start knitting, and then I will see how it will look. But this sample I did, obviously, to kind of get an estimate on gauge, even though this I didn't knit in the round, and I will be knitting the sweater in the round, so it's maybe not completely accurate, but I think it's it's gonna be, it, it works for my purpose. And this, this way, like the row gauge, I think is still pretty accurate. Um, and whew, I get all out of breath. I'm so excited about this because I've been really planning a color work sweater for a long time. And then I just figured like, should I, should I film it? Should I make a video about it? And then I thought, yeah, let's make a video about it. And let's track how many hours I actually put into it. So this is going to be very exciting. Um, the yarns I've chosen to work with are in this bag. Um, whoop. So I'm going to be pairing, these are, so my main color is going to be this black one. Um, I believe this is called the Little Green Shed or Little gr little Green Grass. No, what is this label called? I'll put it uh, on the screen here. Uh, that one in the color black, and I'm going to be pairing that with a mohair. So this is the brushed alpaca silk from Drops. And then I have all of these from Madeleine Tosh. And I'm also going to be pairing them with some mohairs. These are from um, a long, Along with like Anna, I think she's called. Um, she kindly gifted me these mohairs, super, super soft. I love them. And then I have this tune silk mohair from Sunnes, and it's only just because I wanted to get the color as accurate as possible to match my main colors. Okay, almost ready to start, but first there's something I need to do with these little buddies. And the cats are probably gonna get crazy now. <laughs> So I have this little uh, yarn winder thingy to make these kind of yarn cakes and I haven't used this for, oh, you can't see me. I haven't used this for a long time. Um, I got this when I bought my knitting machine back in the day.
so that took a really long time, but now <laughs> I have my yarn cakes and this is going to make it much easier when I, or hopefully it's gonna make it much easier when I knit this sweater that is worked with four colors. Um, and I just want to ensure that, I mean, they're gonna get tangled anyway. So if we like this, they're not gonna get that tangled. Oh, I don't think you can see my head. All right, let's begin casting on. just completed my first round and I really really adore working with this yarn. It's pretty thin but I want to do a color work sweater that is not so stiff like I feel like the old ones I made I always choose very chose very small needles for color work and when you do with multiple colors I feel like it always gets a little bit more tense or a little bit tighter than maybe normally so that's why I have chosen to use the five millimeter needles, even though probably usually um, I would knit this maybe with four millimeter if it would just be stuck in a stitch. There's part of me that really enjoys being able to measure stuff and numbers and statistics and making lists so that's why i feel really excited about this oh bigo is i'm having the camera on the cat tree and bigo just climbed up so <laughs> that's why it was a little shaky there's just something really satisfying in being able to measure things and putting numbers on things it becomes somehow more more I don't know, tangible, and that's probably uh, part of my genetics. My grandfather, he was an engineer, he worked for IBM his whole life, and my dad is a little bit of a weirdo in the sense that when we go on holiday, you know, normal people... Oh, that is Yuki, that is coming home. Hello! Hello. <laughs> uh, normal people will bring like a novel, but my dad will bring like, uh, you know, grammar or uh, if he's studying language, um, that's kind of his idea of fun. just finished the neck ribbing and now I'm gonna try for the first time to knit them together because usually I will knit it double and then just fold the collar double and sew it uh, on the inside seam but I know that you can also knit this together I just haven't ever tried it but I'm gonna try it this time and let's see how that works <laughs> So here's where we're at. Um, I continued to knit quite far into the night and just before going to bed I decided to try it on because I felt like it looked a little small around the yoke and well I'll just show you. Mm, so I put one of these stitch wires in here so that I can try it on without having the cable. As you can see it's Kind of like a little bit of a, you know, one of those things that you put on pets when they've had surgery, like one of those cones. Um, so the yoke is way too tight here where I start the collar work. And this is my own mistake again, because when I did the 
sample piece I didn't knit in the round and I knew that I was gonna be probably knitting much tighter when I knit in the round instead of knitting back and forth but this sample I did obviously to kind of get an estimate on gauge even though this I didn't knit in the round and I will be knitting the sweater in the round so it's maybe not completely accurate but I think it's it's gonna be it, it works for my purpose works for my purpose <sighs> this means <laughs> I have to I have to unravel it um until until the neckline but that's okay and I'm really happy I did it now already because there was a part of me thinking like oh, I'll just keep on going looks fine it's probably gonna be okay when I block it but I mean this is I don't think this is going to like this is just not gonna lie nice and flatly and also because I wanted the color the col yeah the color and the neckline opening to be pretty large and not so like tightly hugging the neck so <sighs> that's what I'm gonna do and I know I said in the beginning that if I'd make any mistakes, I'm just gonna keep them in or keep that time in, but I feel like this is such a major mistake. This is like a design flaw. So I am going to go back to, I think it took me two and a half hours to knit this collar. So then I'm just gonna basically um, go back, do all of this, and then I'm gonna start the timer again, if that makes sense. So I still get an accurate estimate, kind of of the time, if I wouldn't have done this mistake. Um, so we still keep the experiment alive and intact. <laughs> Finally got my stitches back on so uh, and I also decided to unravel the double knitting so when I knitted the collar together or the neckline together because I had a feeling I did it a little bit too tight so I'm just not gonna risk anything this time and I'm just gonna do it as I usually do it which is that I sew it together all right here we go again out for a walk a little bit uh, I feel like if I just stay indoors the entire uh, day knitting I am very restless in the evening and it's quite nice weather so I'm gonna go out for a walk and maybe go to my parents for a little bit and then then come back home and then I always feel more accomplished <laughs> during the day if I've been somewhere else and not just at home even though I could totally stay stay indoors knitting all day long somebody recently asked me on Instagram if I feel happier now that I've switched to the knitting content back again and well the short answer to that is yes I definitely feel like I found my calling again I found my passion and I really feel like now I'm focused on the right thing which is to make the things that I really love and share that and not be so focused on the numbers the algorithms trying to create viral content and and I mean that is because this is what I do this is the living and this is the way I make money so um, of course you have to think about those things but I still feel like as a creative person and you know it's kind of the cliche like focus on what you love and the money will follow but it's not I think always that black and white uh, but right now I do feel like I've done all this groundwork I've tried many different things and I'm back to where it all started and for those of you who don't know I started out on YouTube uh, back in 2019 so that's almost exactly three years ago because I uploaded my first video on January 29th I think um, so I've been on YouTube for three years but before that I started to put in lots more effort into Instagram and when I started it was really all about knitting and knitwear and I tried to sell my own knitted stuff but then I kind of got more swept away by photography and creative photography I took a lot of self-portrait because um, I figured selling your knitwear online is really difficult to make into a viable 
business and that was kind of my ultimate goal to see if I could somehow use social media um, and make somehow that into a living and then I started the YouTube channel and that just became very focused on photography and there were a couple of reasons because uh, well first of all that was what I was really into and then secondly I had one video go kind of a little bit viral um, called 10 self-portrait ideas when the camera doesn't love you um, so then I just figured like okay photography that's what I'm gonna do and like photo tips and ideas and that was really the thing that I was focused on and I was really passionate about and also people responded and resonated with that a lot but then I think like around a year ago I started to feel a little bit this kind of sense of like I don't know um, that it got harder and harder to come up with ideas that I was genuinely excited about I somehow felt like the bucket of creativity for creative photo ideas and sharing those was a little bit empty <laughs> and I did this whole uh, photo challenge and I did a whole course and like I did many things so I really felt like okay I have to still stick with this and I can't just give up just because now I'm a little bored with it <laughs> you know what I mean but then in the summer um, I really started to feel like a sense of a shift and I just felt like this is not the thing this is not the thing anymore like I feel like I'm done with this subject like photography as the main topic of my channel that that is not what I want to focus on anymore and then oh it's kind of window I hope you can hear me <laughs> and then I kind of felt like I am just gonna go back to my roots back to knitting It just feels so so right out yesterday or a couple of days ago I just said to Yuki like I really feel like I've, I've found my calling you know this is this is what I was meant to be doing all along and I knew it from all along like that's where I started out but maybe I wasn't confident enough maybe I had to do this whole round trip like you know uh, go back to to the start essentially and now I'm so much wiser I'm so much smarter and I can appreciate it more oh by the way this the hat that I'm wearing it's called marshmallow beanie and I have a free pattern for it so if you want to make it uh, there is a description in no there is a link in the description below also such a dope moment I wrote marshmallow wrong so I wrote it marshmallow with an e instead of an a so uh, sorry about that spelling mistake guys English is not my native language <laughs> all right let's let's go I'm really happy that I unraveled and went back. I like the design that I chose much better. So I instead decided to do the increases uh, between these brown stripes. So the first one, if you remember, it was just striped uh, evenly with one stitch and one stitch. But now I did the increases in there instead. And I think it's going to look really nice. And next I'm going to be... Uh, starting the pink uh, and I'm kind of making up the design as I go because the sample swatch I wasn't so happy with so yeah it's just knitting it's Sunday it's um, a very gray day but it's really uh, a lot of snow so I'm gonna go and walk a little bit in winter uh, wonderland <laughs> All 
right, a little bit of an update. Um, I've had some, ooh, fluff in my mouth. <laughs> Um, I've had a couple of tough days because, hey, I did not count for the fact that when I knitted in the round, uh, it became much tighter. So as you know, I had to unravel first this part. I knitted it again. I knitted all the way down here, only to find out uh, that it was way too tight. My body, like the part for the body and the sleeves would have been like super tight. So I had to go back and unravel that part. Um, and then I knitted it off. And frankly, I was just... Oh, not in the best of moods when I found that out, so I didn't film any of it. But now you know, and again, I just stopped the timer and then um, I didn't have the timer on when I unraveled and did it again. But here we are, uh, I think this is day five now of this challenge or day six or something like that. Um, and it is super nice. I am really happy that I did unravel. Note to self, note to you it's always better to unravel. I know in the moment it kind of stings and it kind of sucks to have to go back and do it again, but it's always so much worth it. And I really live by this now. I will always unravel. If it's something that I just know will bother me, it won't be how I wanted it to be or how it should be. So I will always unravel. And now I am super happy with how it's turning out. Now, my initial plan was to make the body the main color to be black uh, with these kind of white little dots. Uh, but turns out, in the yarn shop, they don't have more of that exact black color, that cauldron color of life in the tall grass. Um, so now I'm kind of thinking that maybe I'll just go for this brown color instead. I really, really like the color of it. And it also has like these little, it's kind of a vivid color. Um, so I think maybe I'll do it instead in brown with these white dots, but I'm not sure if I should still have a little bit more pattern here or if I should just finish kind of the yoke and be done with the pattern. So um, I have to kind of soak on that. No, like think about that, ponder, <laughs> make some big design choices. Um, but so far I'm really happy with it and uh, yeah, increased. So the places I've done the increases are here on the yoke, uh, increased a lot here, and then I increased here as well to get more stitches for my body to get that nice and oversized look, even though knitting the round with Fair Isle, which I tend to knit much tighter. All right, let's see. Very, very interested. It's starting to take shape, finally. Okay, a little bit of an update. I have run into a slight problem, which is that the silk mohair yarn that I was pairing my main yarn with, I ran out and because it's a yarn that I received as a gift from Alonga Mikvana and I love it um, but um, I would have to order it from her and it would take you know probably a week and I don't have a week <laughs> to wait to finish this thing so I'm now it's super snowy uh, I'm going to this yarn shop that have they have like kind uh, a lot of brands that I'm not so familiar with like I feel like they have more um, they don't have that much like hand dyed yarn and stuff so I don't come to this shop that often it's in Olunkula it's called Lankamalma for anyone in Helsinki um, I don't come to it that often but now I am really in need of this very particular shape so I hope I can find like a similar yarn for the other sleeve the remaining sleeve so I can finish this project so in we go and wish me luck have any matching shade in that first yarn store but I went to another yarn shop called Snurre which is in the center of Helsinki and I managed to find this yarn um, it's called oh <laughs> it's called Ito Sensai I think Ito Sensai and it's really really close to the shade of silk mohair that I'm using from along with Anna and I am sure because she gifted me this I'm sure she would be more than happy to send some more or I could even order of course I would love to order some yarn from her but as I said before um, I just don't have the patience to wait for probably a week or two because she would have to ship it from from the UK so I'm going to use this one for the remaining sleeve and then for the second sleeve and this is the current state of the sweater. 
I don't know, can you see the sweater? I can see when you see the sweater. <laughs> and well, as you know, um, this isn't as scientific and as precise I, as I had hoped for in the beginning, but I did some calculations and so far for the collar or the like the neck collar, I think I used about two and a half hours then for the yoke. So until when I've divided up for the sleeves and for the body, I think I used around 15 hours. Now this is kind of a rough estimate because I did have to uh, unravel so much, but I think like 15 or 16 hours, quite a long chunk of time. And that's of course, because I'm using all this, or I did all this color work. So that just took a long time. Then for the actual body. So that's this part here after, after the sleeve. So from the underarm to the hem, around five hours. I don't know if that can be precise. I mean, I have, I did measure it with my, with my iPad and it says, five um and i don't know if i forgot to try it on okay i decided to put in seven hours instead because i don't think there's any way that i could have finished that in just five hours so i'm putting in seven hours just to be safe and then for the first sleeve so this is how far i've come i've used around two hours which again feels like a really long time but it's again because of all this color work and i just wasn't very fast when i was knitting it so uh now i'm going to continue knitting it and i'm probably going to start working this in there uh, on alternate rounds just to avoid any big color changes um and then at the end of the sleeve i'm also thinking that i will put some of this white in there at the end because i think that will look cute Okay, very exciting stuff happening. I am determined to make this the day when I finish this sweater. So here is progress so far. So we have, we have a sleeve people. <laughs> and the other one I've done the pattern work on. And let me just show you what it looks like. Or now yeah, I'll show you, even though it kind of will be, it won't be as a dramatic reveal in the end then, but I'll still show you. Because the thing is, I'm going to be knitting this sleeve tonight um, or during the day <laughs> and then I'm going to be blocking the whole thing because uh, the benefits oh Vico is grabbing my yarn no Vico um, so the benefits of blocking something is that when you've knitted something you've twisted and pulled it and kind of manipulated the yarn into this new shape okay here it is okay let me get back to the blocking in just a second this this is how it's, uh, how it's taking shape. I am really happy with the sleeve. So I did this kind of a funky sleeve. I've never done a sleeve like this before. So it's super long and I made it so long so that I can fold it up because I just think it looks really nice. And then I even made these little stripes here and just did a bunch of decreases. And I really like how it looks. And I'm gonna repeat that on the other side. So back to the blocking, try to focus now. Uh, <laughs> is that if you can see here um, on the color work here on the yoke especially you can see it it's kind of bubbly and that's of course I tried to knit very evenly but still when you have a lot of stuff going on a lot of yarn and a lot of color it kind of tends to bulk up a little bit so when I'm going to block this baby everything is going to relax it's going to really bloom so it kind of opens up the yarn and it's just going to look so much more even Before blocking my sweater I am going to have to weave in some of these ends and I'm just gonna weave them in but I'm probably gonna leave a little bit of a tail so then after blocking it that's when I'm gonna cut the tail because I recently learned that that's actually a better way so this is gonna this is gonna take me a while but it's okay <laughs> Let's block 
this. Step number one is to fill up the sink with some water. Step number two, soak your sweater in. What I like to do is just gently kind of push it and you can see how it's soaking up that water. So you really want to make sure that it's really, every bit of it is completely soaked in the water. What you can also do is use some wool detergent, a couple of drops um, while it soaks in there, but this is really optional. I mean, I don't always do this. The great benefit about blocking is that it will actually make your fabric softer, so the yarn will become softer. So if you have, for example, a yarn that you feel is a little itchy or coarse, soaking it and blocking it, and even you can use some conditioner or you can use some just wool detergent, so detergent that is specifically made for wool, um, and that will just soften it up. I know I'm pretty sensitive to itchiness, um, so I just found that with some sweaters that I made that I felt that were kind of itchy, once I blocked them, they became much softer and I felt like a smoother surface. Let it soak in there for about 10 to 15 minutes and then uh, let out the water. And then the next part is very important that you don't wring or squeeze or anything like that, or you do squeeze, <laughs> but you don't twist it. So I will just not quit. Gently start to squeeze out the water from the sweater without like rubbing or doing anything like that, but just like gently squeezing out the water. Now this is really the part where you want to be mindful about your sleeve. They tend to grow a lot, I feel, in size, so you might want to make sure that they don't become like super, super long. Alright, so when you've done all that, the last thing you want to do is lay it out flat and let it dry. So I generally use the sauna. For this, we have a sauna <laughs> in our flat and even though it's not on right now, uh, I might put it on later, we might go in the sauna. So then when it is just going to dry a little bit faster here. All right, another moment we've all been waiting for. How long did it actually take to knit this whole thing? And remember, I did not count the things I did wrong when I had to go and unravel. So collar, two and a half hours. Yoke, about 15 hours. Body, around seven hours. Sleeves, eight hour per sleeve. So 16 hours altogether. Then for the finishing and blocking, I would say around two hours. So all in all, it took around 42 hours and well, in reality, for this one, of course, because I did all the mistakes, I was designing this as I was going along, so it probably took me more than 50 to 60 hours, but I would still say like roughly for a sweater, if you would knit it from a pattern, probably around 40 plus hours. I will keep on holding my head high. And here is how it turned out. I am so, so happy and so satisfied with the final result. I love the sleeve detail. I really think the blocking did a great job of just like ironing out all those bulkiness. Oh, it is quite a windy day. As you can see, lots of snow, lots of ice came out here to do a little fashion show for you. Thank you so much for watching this video. So this pattern and this sweater will be featured in the book that I'm currently working on that is going to be published in the autumn of 2022. So the pattern is coming up. You will be seeing more of this sweater. All right, thank you so much for hanging out with me, for watching this video. And if you're still here, then put the little yarn vault emoji in a comment below so that I know that you watched it until the end. I did it uh, in a recent video and I thought it was really fun just to see like how many people actually watch until the end. Uh, so put the little yarn vault emoji in there. And if you'd like to come and say hi, I am over at Instagram. No, I'm over at Kutvakik on Instagram <laughs> and I try to share photos there. Hopefully I will see you soon again here in another knitting video. All right, take care and happy knitting. Ciao!